Welcome to today's H1 2021 release update for SAP Success Factors. This is part of AKT's Insight Series, where AKT has been an SAP Gold Partner for a lucky 13 years. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle, and the facilitator for today's webinar. All attendees are in listen-only mode. On your panel, you are able to ask questions through the text box, or alternatively, you can always email info at aktglobal.com with your questions after this webinar. So our panelists today, we have Roy Levy, our SuccessFactors Platform Solution Architect, Jessica Boyko, our uh, Recruiting and Onboarding Lead cons Consultant, Evangelia, who is our Time Management Lead Consultant, Simon, who's our People Analytics Lead Consultant for the EMEA region. So before I pass this webinar to them, let me first introduce AKT to those who are first time participants. AKT is one of the largest SAP Cloud People Solutions consultancies in the EMEA region. With more than 250 consultants across several countries, including France, the UK, Czech Republic, Switzerland, and recently, South Africa. We offer strategy and advisory, complex systems implementation programs, and apropos to today's release management webinar, AKT has one of the broadest offerings of application management services and support to help you both sustain and optimize your success factor system. And our domain of expertise extends throughout the SAP ecosystem, including success factors, SAP Sales Cloud, Qualtrics, SAP CRM, and recently, SAP WorkZone for HR. So on to today's webinar. Today's agenda covers the highlights of this release for the presented modules in this Success Factors suite. Platform, Employee Central, Time Off, Recruiting, Recruitment Marketing, Onboarding 2.0, and Finishing Up with Analytics. What we're going to be doing as well in this webinar is share with you what we call low hanging fruit, as denoted by this cherry icon. Since last year, we have been seeing that organizations are still finding it really challenging to even meet their daily operational requirements to ensure that their employees and businesses well being and productivity are maintained. So we understand that the additional effort to make sure that your organization adopts the latest systems innovations may be difficult. So that's why in this webinar, we're highlighting some what we call low hanging fruit, things that you'll be able to implement with the minimum effort and quickly. So keep a lookout for these symbols uh, throughout the webinar. Let me remind you that these new features are already available for you in your preview instance since the 16th of April, and we will be and will be in your production instance from the 21st of this month. And one more thing, please note that since the last release, SAP has changed the documentation of this release management and made it more user friendly. You can now use the What's New page to filter specific topics, view specific details, or even better, watch short videos. We encourage you to review this webpage as we as well have found this very useful. So on to today's webinar. The first person to present is Roy with regards to the platform. Thanks, Michelle. My name is Roy Levy and I'm AKT Platform Solution Architect and Knowledge Manager. Let's start with the platform topics relevant for all of you. In this first release of 2021, SAP SuccessFactor HXM Suite provides new admin self-service capability, Configuration Center. Using Configuration Center, you can get a holistic view of all configurations that are supported across SAP SuccessFactors application. Configuration Center allows you to view 
or download configurations to your machine and transport configurations from one tenant to another. Configuration Center simplifies the user experience around configuring change management process, viewing the managed configurations, and supporting toward login quality incident when you encounter any configuration issue. Important, Configuration Center supports only employee central talent management and Qualtrics configurations for now. Moving on to another major enhancement, time-based proxy assignment. You can now restrict proxy assignment to a specified time range when you assign a proxy to act on your behalf. Using your personal account on user settings page, you can add a start date and end date or both. When you assign a proxy on the settings page, the assigned proxy can only access your account, your user account, during the specified time range. It's a great solution for implementation of compliance requirements and automatic termination. The most significant enhancement in this release is that competency management will move from job profile builder to a new capabilities library administration tool. Center of Capabilities. Center of Capabilities is a new framework that provides a centralized repository known as capabilities library to capture the capabilities of people in your organization. Capabilities includes competencies, work styles, work values, and other organization-defined attributes that enable people to achieve desired outcome. In this release, the support capability type is competency. You can perform the following tasks by using Center of Capabilities. Create and manage competencies and the associated behaviors based on organization-specific requirements. Create a, li a library structure to organize competencies under different libraries, categories, and groups. With the Center of Capabilities, SAP plan to change the way capabilities are captured on both people and experience. Across SuccessFactor products, this initiative aims to shift the approach toward work as being more people-focused than job-focused. To meet this object, SAP plans to make Center of Capabilities the preferred framework to support the following features in future releases. Provide users the ability to create a portfolio of their capabilities. Support additional capability types, such as skills and certifications. Introduce a proficiency rating scale for users to raise their skills. Allow success factor products to consume capabilities from the centrally maintained capabilities library. Configuration requirements Center of Capabilities is based on Job Profile Builder and is automatically enabled if you have enabled Job Profile Builder. Existing com competencies will be automatically migrated to Center of Capabilities and there will be no changes to the functionality related to using competencies for performance form. Translations are not supported in the first half of 2021, and product team is targeting to improve it for the second half of 2021. So up until now, we have talked about improvements for the admin. Now moving on to the user experience. As you probably know, since the last release, it is possible to activate a new homepage from Upgrade Center. SAP have redesigned the homepage experience so it is simpler 
more engaging, faster to load, and available on all devices. It includes a simplified administration experience as well. Now, with this release, further innovations have been added. The following enhancements are now available. More quick actions, for example, report center. Possibility to show or hide quick actions. Add and edit favorites. Business rules for custom content. And time of card also available. The redesigned homepage offers users an intuitive and seamless entry point for the entire SAP SuccessFactor suite. The redesign focused on dynamic content such as frequently executed and save for later actions and time sensitive tasks. All content is organized based on what is most important to the individual. Important to know, not all functions are available yet. For example, report tiles are still not available. Staying with homepage, SAP announced the migration of legacy homepage experience to the latest homepage experience. The legacy homepage will reach end of maintenance on May 2021 and will be deleted on May 2022. You can upgrade to the latest homepage today using the Upgrade Center. We encourage you to review the available information and be, begin planning the adopt of the latest homepage for your organization. Um, and these were the release highlights for platform and foundation. Moving now to Employee Central with Evangelia. Thank you, Roy. Um, my name is uh, Evangelia Banayodu, and I'm the Time Management Lead Consultant. So next, we will review together some of the major highlights for Employee Central and Time Management. So let's start with an overview. Uh, this release has a lot of technical uh, enhancements that help you maintain overall control of your system's configuration, either by easily identifying fields synchronized from employee central to employee profile, or by gaining access to succession data model, validate configuration and data through additional checks, keep data up to date by activating enhanced business rules, contacting users through Qualtrics and get their feedback with more automated processes, and many more. Without drilling down into the technical details, let's talk about the most important enhancements while identifying the ones that can rather be easily adapted. Let's start with a very exciting feature which will be released after many customer requests. We can now generate and document and share via email for up to 500 employees at the same time. All you have to do is to select the right document template and company for which employees this applies to, and then select one of the three options. Send it to uh, each employee's email address, as this is recorded in Employee Central, or send it all documents to the job owner's email address, or both. Moving on with a quite remarkable change, which system admins are even more empowered to do now, and this is gaining full access on all configuration data models via Admin Center. Previously, we could only manage corporate and cor country-specific corporate data models through Admin Center, 
as these were moved uh, from um, provisioning settings into admin center. But now succession related data models have been moved there as well. As of this release, system admins can be assigned with appropriate permissions to review current and all previous versions of both data models through export data model screen. Now, this new feature is one of my favorites. Till now, pay component updates have been a real challenge for, all, for a lot of customers, since certain updates cannot take place if the specific pay components are in use. And that is why SAP provides now an additional validation in the check tool with which you can get the full list of employees who use a certain pay component. That will make our lives a lot easier whenever a pay component needs to be updated or even deleted. Have in mind that until now, you could only get such information through ad hoc reports. This feature looks minor, but it can improve administrators' daily tasks and efficiency while reducing risk. When hiring an employee and depending on the criteria configured in the instance, the system checks whether this user has been within the organization in the past, and if that's true, then the system classifies the employee as a match, while certain information, like for example, personal data, can be automatically filled in. Till now, these duplicate checks would result into a screen with a minimum uh, matched results, like previous user's date of birth and national ID. As of this release, however, you can have more information available, so you can narrow down the results more effectively to find the right match for the rehired employee. Moving on to the next enhancement, you may find it a bit technical, but it's, it's totally worth it. Cross-entity rules can now be executed when job information changes occur, following an update on the position. Now, what does this mean? For example, a certain employee is assigned to a certain position. Position grade needs to be updated, so employee's manager will perform this in position or chart. As soon as the process is approved, employee's job information will be automatically updated accordingly. And in case this should also result to an increase on employee's remuneration package, then compensation information section can also be automatically updated according to the defined criteria. So in a few words, success factors can now offer automated processes in even more cases, designed better and ensure data quality and consistency. Closing up for Employee Central with another exciting feature, a new enhanced tool for mass updates on position data. Until now, whenever administrators had to perform a mass update, they had to combine different configurations of rules and scheduling of jobs to do so. With this new feature, you get better control over the data you want to modify, since you can uh, use extensive filtering and sorting capabilities to build the list of positions you want to modify with even more flexibility. Review changes highlighted on the user interface and save change requests as drafts. Share drafts with colleagues for a review before finalizing the changes. Download logs to report on all mass changes performed in the system. And even configure additional fields in the position itself that can be modified as part of a mass change request or used as filters. Now, let's continue with some of the major new release highlights in time management uh, modules. We could not start this first half 2021 release presentation on time management with no other than the most promising new product from SAP Success Factors, time tracking solution. The new time tracking solution helps you create a complete view of your workforce labor costs, better ensures that your employees are paid accurately and on time. The solution's functions can be natively integrated into SAP Success Factors human experience management suite. This new product is strategically positioned for organizations that uh, need time tra tracking um, evaluation for correct employee payments but without the need for complex shift scheduling, rostering, or time allocation to service orders. Some of its uh, key capabilities will include 
clock terminal integration, clock in, clock out on web and mobile, track employee attendance and demonstrate compliance with complex pay premiums and union rules, provide a simple method of work time capture for managers and employees via a mobile app, allocate time to cost centers for real-time labor reporting, tied integration with SAP success factors and your payroll system. Based on the launch of the new time tracking solution, some of the new features will apply on the existing timesheet module as well. A completely reimagined employee self-service in user, interfa user interface for attendance recording is one of them. The new user interface supports accessibility standards and can be used on both desktop and mobile devices. Before upgrading to the new user interface, you should ensure that no custom fields of type user have been configured. Therefore, it's imperative to thoroughly test this in your test instances as well. Among the most promising new features that come with the new time tracking solution is expected to be the clog in, clog out integration with the external time tracking services. With this new capability, organizations will be able to automatically update employees' attendances as time records in SAP Success Factors timesheet. Time records are the pair time events for an employee's entry and exit from work using the clock terminal or any other external time tracking service. When you implement clock in, clock out, the employee time shows up on timesheet through time event pairing. With clock in, clock out, you can now automatically record employees' attendance on the timesheet, integrating with various clock terminals and external systems. You can also create missing time events or even delete duplicate time events. Another exciting new feature needs to be, of course, the single record approval. With this flexibility, timesheet entries can now be approved separately rather than just on a weekly basis as they used to. This new feature will be beneficial for organizations in the cases where they need to pre-approve an attendance or an overtime record before the whole timesheet entry gets approved, or in cases where an additional approver needs to approve timesheet entries. Single record approval helps you ensure that you can get specific workflow approvals for certain time types, independent of the weekly timesheet approvals. A very similar enhancement to the one you already have in your time of module is the introduction of a two-month calendar overview on timesheets. This interactive calendar helps employees to view past timesheet entries keep track of their scheduled payments, and of course, take a glimpse on their recorded attendances, breaks, on-call and absences entries. Last but not least is another useful new feature voted from co customer community idea. This is the new permissions capability to use the granted user's peers permission function. If you want to grant or restrict the target population to peers, for a specific permission role. This is handy especially for team absence calendar since now you can use this function to restrict the absences that appear in the peers view without having to assign the employee times permission to all employees. So that was all from me. Moving now to Jessica to review the major highlights for recruitment and onboarding. Thank you, Evangelia. My name is Jessica Boyko, and I'm the lead consultant for recruiting and onboarding and APKT Global. I will be presenting to you now the recruiting releases and then later the onboarding releases. <laughs> to start, the Career Site Builder has improved its cookie banner and cookie content manager settings so that now visitors to the public facing career sites of the customers can customize and select their own cookie setting. This is function, this functionality that visitors would find standard when visiting website. So a good, a good update for the career sites. Next, SuccessFactors 
Success Factors Recruiting now proactively reminds organizations when their career site SSL certificate needs to be renewed. These alerts are key so that candidates can always reach your site and not be frustrated when your site won't load because your SSL certificate expired. Sorry, the Career Site Builder offers two reminder, two reminder, reminder methods, a pop-up dialog that appears when logging into Career Site Builder, as well as the ability to enable emails, reminders for admin users. This alert is great, but please make sure that your system admins responds to these alerts in a timely fashion. An alert is only a good as the follow through. Now, jobs can now be posted to multiple locations at once on the job boards that support multiple locations. Now, location is a new category that saves the location, the postcode and the country region information and the new mapping name map to location foundation object, multiple locations supported, is introduced to the job posting rule to fetch the foundation object location information. When posting the jobs to multiple locations, you can, you can set the field completion rules to auto-populate the location information with default values or the location foundation object defined in the job requisition template. The location foundation object mapping in the job posting rule supports multiple locations. Note that the job boards that don't support multiple locations provide, provide only the primary locations to the jobs. And as a reminder, the primary location is when you have in your job requisition the multi-location uh, fields enabled, you always need to select where is the primary. So keep in, keep in mind that when you will try to multi-post for a job board that will not support the multiple location, the system will search for this primary that you have selected. Now, something that I do want to say about the recruiting posting and the multi-locations, I don't know if you have noted, but in the last releases, we are always all the time having enhancements on the um, recruiting posting. So if until now you, you're not using it because it had some uh, limitations, you could see that this tool is becoming stronger from every release. And if you would like, I suggest you to research a little bit about this because it, it is a game changing for the recruiters. Now I will be moving on to onboarding and I want to present in, um, to you the onboarding new releases, but I also want to say that in the last releases, as we could see, success factors were focused more on finalizing the compliances forms in for the onboarding. And so this is one of the reasons we're not going to see a lot of low hanging fruit here, but still there are some topics that I would like to show you because I found them that very interesting. The first one is the access to onboarding and offboarding dashboard from the global navigation menu in the latest homepage. So from the previous release, when the new homepage was um, released, the companies or we, the partners that we were uh, implementing the onboarding, we, we found a limitation that if you enable the, on, the, the new homepage, you didn't have really a very quick access um, to the onboarding dashboard. And that's the reason why we're seeing it here. I think that now the onboarding was set in the home menu as all of the other modules, and it will allow you to migrate to the new homepage and still be able to access quickly to the onboarding module. The next item I do want to show you is regarding the language um, of the onboarding, the language that is using the system for the onboarding. Until today, we knew that if we are an organization that we want to have um, to simplify and, and to have the, the onboarding module translated for our um, onboardees, there was the limitation that we couldn't really set defaulty the, the locality, the, the language of the onboarding. And this is exactly what this um, what this release is changing. The locale for the external new hire can be now updated automatically when you initiate the onboarding process. And it can be done from the recruiting management. It can be done from the external applicant tracking system 
or you can even set a manually when using the add new hire to onboarding in admin page as the page that I'm showing it to you. So as I was saying, this feature allows the external new hires to see onboarding user interfaces in the locale provided in recruiting management or the one that comes from the external ATS or the one that we set in the admin page when creating the onboarding. Now, what will happen if we don't set a locale um, when initiating the onboarding, the application picks the default locale value that is set in provisioning, okay? So if your default, default language in the system, it's English, that's what an onboard is going to see if you don't set a different um, language to him when initiating the onboarding. Now, um, I do want to speak a little bit about the new onboarding dashboard. We have seen um, some new announcements here, and we can now do, um, we can use the search feature that it was not enabled before. And we can see the checklist task. We can see also the I-9 um, here and also the e verify And all those things that I was mentioning were missing in the onboarding dashboard. And that's one of the reasons why clients didn't migrate it yet from the old onboarding dashboard to the onboarding dashboard, the new. Um, just for the ones that are not uh, familiar with the new, the new, it's, it, in, in my opinion, it has a better UI. It's easy to understand what is the current situation of the onboarding process, not just focusing on the manager or other participant task, but it also includes very, with a very easy way to see also what the onboardee has completed or not. In my opinion, now with this new enhancement, we are going to see more clients starting to use this onboarding dashboard um, from now on. Um, I want to thank you everyone for listening to me and now I'm going to pass the presentation to Simon. Thank you, Jessica. Moving on to stories in people analytics. My name is Simon Reynolds and I'm the People Analytics Lead, and I'll be taking you through some of the highlights from the release today. The most exciting announcement with this release is that the learning schemas are almost here. For a long time now, learning has been only reportable from directly within the LMS module. We are almost at the point of being able to report on all success factors modules from within the same tool, and not only that, but within the same report. As the first step with this release, the learning data will be available standalone and it won't yet be possible to link to other modules. There's a rollout across the data centers between the 30th of June and the 30th of July. For the exact date, please see the link in the chat. For those in DC2, it will be available in preview instances 14th of July and production 30th of July. It's also worth noting there won't be any standard reports included with the release. However, SAP have said um, that it will be possible to build from scratch the reports linked, uh, which will be the second link in the chat now, which suggests that the majority of the learning data will be accessible through the tool. Continuing with the data theme, the maximum number of fields that can be included in a query has increased from 30 to 120. And this is off the back of an enhancement that was raised through the community. We certainly welcome this change, as there's been a few times where we've already hit the previous limit when designing and building reports. Another improvement is the ability to delete unused queries. And this includes a validation to ensure that the query isn't currently in use in any charts or tables, ensuring you don't accidentally delete something important to the story. The last point is from a data perspective that custom fields in Employee Central will automatically be included in the reporting schema available in Query Designer. And that user info fields no longer need to be set to reportable to appear in stories. Moving on to the UI enhancements that have been made to stories in people analytics. The story viewer now has a full screen mode, 
updated page appearance and menu items. The edit and view options are now available together, making it easier to toggle between modes when building a report. In general, the enhancements further improve the usability of story reports. Finally, a roundup of enhancements for the other reporting tools. The retention period for scheduled reports has been standardized to 14 days, irrespective of the report type. And after 14 days, the download report links are now disabled. The previously configured retention periods won't apply any longer, and you can no longer configure any new retention periods. Calibration, succession, and comp and variable pay reports are now available to download along with pitch perfect talent cards. That concludes everything I would like to cover for this release. And I will now hand back over to Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. And thanks to all our panelists uh, today on uh, this webinar. We have a few minutes left uh, in this session, and we did receive a number of questions. So let me open our questions box and uh, have these uh, teed up for our panelists. So uh, the first question, Simon, if you are still online, if you would, uh, the question is, can you now report on time account details along with user ID? Um, I don't have that information to hand, so let me pick that up and I can we can send a response out after the webinar. Fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Second question. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Yes, uh, the question came in if uh, the participants will receive the slide decks uh, of the modules. Yes, following this webinar, uh, all participants as well as all registrants uh, who were unable to attend the live webinar will receive a recording of today's webinar as well as the slide decks uh, for the webinar. So, Roy, if you are also online, if we can uh, ask you the following question, is the new homepage compatible with onboarding 2.0? Yes, but not for the onboarding, only for the internal uh, usage of um, HR. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if that answers your question, uh, that's great. If if you have a follow up question to that, uh, please do uh, type those into the questions box or send us an email at info at aktglobal.com, uh, which we will be happy to respond to after this webinar. Uh, Roy, another question. Can you now report? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, which modules did the configuration center cover? Um, so. The con right now, for now, the Configuration Center supports only Employee Central, Talent Management, and Qualtrics configurations. Um, for the next uh, release, there will be more modules. Fantastic. And I think this is a follow-up. It says, with the new home page, I think I heard you say that the Business Rules title will be included as well. Is this correct? Uh, this will not be applicable for users though, so can you configure this? Can you repeat the last uh, part of the question? Sure, let's 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 break down the question. Uh, is is it correct that the new home page uh, that the business rules within the new home page? Sorry, let me try this again. Within the new home page, is the business rules title included? Business, business rules, rules title is that included? So business rules for custom content, yes, included. Okay. And will this be applicable for users? Mm, we need to check if the, it's only for internal usage or for you end user as well. Fantastic. Well, we'll follow up uh, to the participant with regards to that question. Uh, I think we'll need to delve in deeper for what you may need. Okay, fantastic. Well, with that, we are, I don't see any more 
questions coming in. Let's see. No, uh, we'll follow up with those questions uh, with more detail uh, to the specific uh, questioner. And with that, I want to again thank everyone for taking the time today uh, to present and to participate on this webinar call. Uh, if you have any questions following this webinar, please do not hesitate to email us at info at aktglobal.com. Uh, I also, throughout this webinar, shared with you a link to our AMS services that AKT offers. Again, as I mentioned, we offer one of the broadest offerings of AMS services uh, to help you both sustain and optimize your success factors system. So please do not hesitate to contact us. And with that, I hope you have a good rest of the day and a great week. Stay healthy, everyone. Goodbye.